you can't be happily single and expect for that to transition to happily married. Because when you're happily single, you're selfish. You're only caring about you. You only think about what your desires are. You don't have to consider nothing outside of you. So when you're happily single, happily single, you can't even seek marriage. It's hard. You yeah. can't even see, you can't even see if somebody is fit to be your actual spouse. So the problem is when Excellent you point. get to that point in your life, it could be 27, it could be 40, it could be 50. When you get to that point in your life, it's like, well, guess what? I am no longer happily single. Mm -hmm. Now I want and desire and need a marriage to feel fulfilled in my life. So it, it, it could be a time thing, but I just think it's a maturity thing. But I think, I think that that's different for people who want to date intentionally because you can meet someone and you can like them and then suddenly your whole perspective changed. Yeah, you were happily single and you were selfish and you didn't have to think about anybody, but you like this person and you're starting to love this person so much that you're changing your ideas. And yeah, you want to do this for this person mm -hmm. and you're changing your ideas for this person. So it's a, it's a little different because your mindset does change when you start to love someone. And that's that <clears throat> genuine kind of like love transaction that'll get you from being happily single to being happily in a relationship. But you know what happens and why most relationships fail? Because then you get to that point where there's obstacles. You get to that point where having a relationship is tough, it's hard, and it's work. And the first thing you think about is, I was happily single. I don't need to deal with this. I don't have to settle for this. And now that relationship and the work for that relationship now becomes beneath you. Because you trigger and think back to when you were happily alone. So you're never going to put your best foot forward in the roughest times. For people that think that a relationship, especially a marriage, is going to be peaches and cream, sunshines and rainbows, but and no adversity. That's a different conversation you're, because uh, when you're in a relationship, period, you always have peanut to, gallery. You do have to <laughs> decide what's worth it and what's not. Because not everyone is going to revert back to the idea of, oh yeah, I was happily single, so I can go right back to doing what I was doing before. Not everyone's going to say that. Is this person and the trials and tribulations and the obstacles worth what we have? Some people will agree that it is and keep forward. And some people would just be like, okay, fuck it. I'm not a relationship person. So I'm just going to go back to being happily single. I heard somebody say, right? This is real. I heard I heard somebody say, because they were dating somebody. Is somebody? I was about to say, are you talking about is real? No, no. I, like, I, who are you I, talking about? I'm I, <laughs> It's real, yeah, but we don't know who the person gonna, is. I ain't going to put their name out there, but they were dating somebody for one year and they were going through it for like the last, let's say, two months, right? Prior to, they said, I don't need to deal with this shit, right? This is real, right? Reality for most people. You get to that one year mark, you start having issues. You start thinking, if I'm having issues at nine months or 10 months, I'm going to have issues for the rest of my life. That's not necessarily true. Right. And the problem is, you go, like, a relationship, that relationship within one year period is still fresh enough where you can remember all the fun you had when you were single. All the trips you took without, without any issues. All the times you had girls trips and, and there was nobody saying, nah, I don't want you to go. I don't feel comfortable with you going X, Y, and Z. You can think back so so you can think close. back so close. <laughs> yeah. It's damn near like, it was recent. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Like, so, so the problem is, like, when you are, and, and I think happily single is really what I'm focused on is because I'm not saying people who are single and, you know, actively looking for a relationship or just chilling. When you're embracing being single, you're pride, you have pride being single. You, it's hard for you to turn that switch off because literally yeah. you go from being a, a, a flying eagle and then your wings get clipped a little bit and now you're just walking around like a chicken. <laughs> right. yeah. And not and now yeah. we ate you. Yeah. You at the Popeyes. And you mad at the person that clipped your <laughs> wing. Like, like, like yeah. you know, happily I'll single. be honest. I but well, go ahead, go ahead. Happily single comes off as I'm super independent and this is like my my way of saying, Oh, it's just me. It's just about me. It's just about me. And if that's what you want, then a relationship may not even be for you. At at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think once you get to that point. 
Oh. I said, you make the decision to decide whether the relationship is worth it and you continue to fight for and move no, on. No, no, but he's saying, or you're just relationships aren't for me. But that's not what he's saying. I know, he's saying you don't even enter the relationship. In line with what Alan was saying, as far as being obedient and, 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 and respecting and honoring these particular obligations, is because the people in that relationship, they have had a conversation about what the expectations are and what the understanding is. So they have to be obedient to those rules. That, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't want it to be... No, it's, not a, it's not a habitual thing. Wait. In terms of... Who's a habitch? <laughs> <laughs> like, wait. Like, you remember the episode not, of Jamie Foxx? Like, okay, it's, it's, nobody. <laughs> who's a habitch? Um, it's not so like your habits. I knew that was Jamie Foxx. It is. <laughs> it's, it's not like the habit. So let's just say if Alan comes home at 9.30 or 10 o'clock every Friday, but then the actual rule is don't come past 3 a.m. And then one weekend he stays to 2.30. He's not breaking the rules, but he did break his habit. I think those are two different things because he's yeah. setting the expectation that I'm going to be home typically around 9.30, 10. But now you're questioning me, but I'm still following the rules. The only thing I did, didn't do was the same habit. Uh, thing that I typically would do. Now, I've had to, I, I honestly had a situation where I was with the girl and I was like, we're not working out because there's no structure in our relationship, right? I was like, I need this. We can't do this. We can't do that. And she told me, she's like, I feel like I'm in school with you. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is the only way that I operate. Mm. I can't operate under this yeah. this other shit that you want to do this Living freely, really, yeah. Hey, I need drill structure, Sergeant Rico. But but I just <laughs> I need structure in my relationship. I need structure in my life. I need structure in my house. Everything has to be accounted for. Yep. Right, and that's just how I work. So when we just living, you know, with too much spot spot. Spontaneity. Spontaneity. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, wait, wait, what is it? Hold on. Clown him if you want. You got five seconds. Clown him if you want. No, to. no, no. He, he wasn't going to get it. Though. What was it? Spontaneity. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, no, no support. I was so <laughs> unsure Team about that. Skin. But <laughs> but when I have too much of that, um, it doesn't. It I don't like. I don't like it. I don't work well with it because then it gets in the way of different things. There's no real, you know, like there's no real rules and regulations. And I feel like because yeah. and, and I don't like the tit for tat shit. So if I do something and now you do it. Right? But I didn't know it was a rule. You shouldn't have tatted it. I mean, you should have titted it. No, but because I didn't know it was a rule. Yeah. I didn't know that that's oh, something okay. that was going to okay. make you upset. You get me? But if you said, yo, Rico, don't come home at 4 a.m. And I come home at 4.15, I already, I know I tit it. <laughs> so, you better expect that tat. No, I still don't want the tat. But, I already, <laughs> but I'm like, I know I'm wrong, though. But if we yeah. never spoke about it and I did it exactly. and now you're on my line bugging or you're in my face bugging... I'm like, but we never had an agreement. It's really just like rules of engagement. Yep. Mm -hmm. in, in any relationship that you have, whether it's business, whether it's, you know, like um, um, educational when you're in school and how you interact with your professors or whatever, um, with your spouse, even with your siblings. Like, I have boundaries in, in things that I allow and what I don't allow with my siblings. Because... You don't get to talk to me like you talk to your wife yep. or how you talk to your mama or how you talk to your kids, period. You just don't because that's just not how my life is set up. And if we can't agree on that, then that's fine. Then we just we can't talk, I guess. Yep. You know, and I, I think that it, even though it sounds harsh, I think that that's the healthiest way for people to... Um, What's the word? Move in life? Yeah. I guess well, when you have the boundaries and you have rules and you have things that kind of keep shit things in place. Balance. Yeah, it, it keeps yeah. things in balance. Yeah. Because it's like, if I already told you, or no, not, not if I told you, if we have agreed, mm -hmm. yeah, both of us have agreed that, that X equals Z, that X needs to equal Z until we agree otherwise. Yeah. You understand? And... The rules of engagement are, and, and, and y'all, anybody can comment or whatever on this, but I think when we think about rules of engagement, we always think about business. 
but our marriages are business. Our, our, the way we run our homes, they're businesses. You know what I mean? Even as friendships, we have rules of engagement with our friendships, with our parents. For everything. Like, you know, you know what your mama can't come to you about because you know what her shortcomings are. You know what your daddy can't come to you about because you know the kind of shit that he was on. You know what I mean? So it was like, th those are all rules of engagement. Even, like, even, like, even though there may be like, you know, different nomenclature and like terms or phrases or whatever, we all sort of look at these as all being rules of engagement and all relationships in our, all relationships in our lives require rules of engagement. I said this too, because the, the most peaceful relationship that I've ever had. <laughs> had I, rules. I had rules. By day 30, I was like, yo, listen, scares me, this has got to how it has to be. <laughs> and it was agreed upon from I'm the okay rip. With it. And and that's why I never had an issue with her. Like, like we probably a tyrant had, to me. We, we, had, we only had one or two. We only had one or two real fights, right? Now, then I've had other relationships, which were good relationships, but there was no rules that were set up mm -hmm. from the get-go. You know what happened? We got too caught up enjoying each other's moments and, and enjoying each other's company where we didn't even think about it. We just uh, ended up in a relationship because we had so much fun together and we felt like we vibed and we clicked. But guess what? There was no structure. Yeah. There, was no, there was no grounding. There was no foundation. So then when shit started going out of whack, we're like, well, hold on. Time out. You can't do that. Well, then you can't do this. And then it became a, 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 a petty battle, right? Rather than a, a clear understanding from the very beginning. And that's why I don't believe in like, remember we had a clip back back in the day talking about intentional dating. Mm -hmm. Intentional dating requires yeah. setting the rules going forward within this relationship. But yeah. the problem is most majority of people or a lot of people don't even know who they are, mm -hmm. what boundaries they really have. Mm -hmm. Some of their boundaries they've adopted from other podcasts or from or, other people. Or other Rico. relationships. Rico. Don't even work for them. Like, or they're actually scared to have those conversations. Like the craziest thing to me, which I don't fucking understand. Like, how are you scared to have conversations about things that directly affect your life? They directly affect your everyday whatever the hell you I'm doing. Scared. I'm pussy. But, but, but what are you scared of? I think they're scared of losing people. I think the fear of losing somebody, and they, they don't... Yeah. I, I, and I, I say this, it might sound bad, but I think confident men don't fear losing women, which is why they get more. And insecure men fear losing women, so they abide by their rules and never mm -hmm. actually implement that, their personal rules yep. because they don't feel they can get another one. They, of that of that quality or of that you know level. Well, and I feel if she's smart, she better same. establish her rules. No, I'm not mad at her. I'm saying him in this scenario. Because <laughs> if if he was confident, I'm about to make a list of rules tonight. Then he'll establish it. Yeah, you should, you you should, should. already have them. You should yeah. already know. Yeah, yeah. you want to deal with me? This especially is, at this age, this one you can have all you know, the fucking rules. I just start this putting your time, bigger right? panties on real no, soon. this time of me right now, I'm in an era of not dating. So when I do start dating again, I'm about to like. She's have happily a, single. I'm about to um yes I I am happily single right now. I'm about to have a list, and be like. Here's my this, portfolio. Right. Here's my pitch. This deck. is the rule <laughs> you have to follow, sir. Yeah, but in in this in this For time me. of happily single, you also have to do the inner work though, because I think yeah. a lot of people forget that part and they just. I think that part. That's what I've been doing. I'm by myself, <laughs> and I love it. Okay. <laughs> Like, you have to know the pathology around why these are your rules. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just be like, oh, I don't like nobody that don't sh shine the tip of their shoes. Like, what, what's, you know? It's something ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I don't want to say, <laughs> yes, yeah, ridiculous, yeah, but like. When they come out of, of that, I'm so super independent, happily single, a lot of times y'all come out of that with the most ridiculous asinine rules and then you meet a dude that you actually like and you're like well, why he didn't stick around and I it's because your you rules are like just asinine making the correlation of like being super independent and happily single like align and that's that's just not what it always is someone I'm a, it can doesn't be always have to be always just sometimes I know, but it doesn't that's, always have to be always but ah. twice now you've said you being happily single is the same as a um 
I'm independent and I don't need anybody. That's just not true. I apologize. But right, wait, no, no, no. I have a, I have a really quick question. Like, because we always like make it a negative thing when women are independent. Do we not want independent? It's the hyper independence that they have a problem with, and mm. and I, it is. Is that not what you mean when you I'm say very independent? Oh, I'm, I'm asking going. you a question. I said so. super, but I meant to be saying I meant to say hyper. No, hyper independence is more than independence. Okay? Yeah, can we define let's, that? Yes, it, please. Let's it, define it. It's, we like independence, mm -hmm. right? But it, you don't need to be hyper. You don't need to be too much. And what, what does hyper look like? Yeah. I mean, for everybody, looks, it's different. Okay. Right? Yeah. What, what is it? Yeah. I, I can't say for everybody, but but for me, mm -hmm. what hyper looks like is, you know, you know how like when you. <laughs> When you go and you fill out a job application, they say, like, do you work well with others? <laughs> right? They check no. Right? That's what hyper-independent is. Like, I agree. They can't take direction. They can't take feedback. They can't take criticism. And they can't see anything outside of the ways that they've already cemented in their brain. That's hyper-independency, right? Yes, and that means that you aren't allowing someone to come into your life right. to be an addition not to take over your life and control it to be an addition to be a plus because you can do it all by yourself and I don't need and I don't and I got this. Okay, so what am I here for? It's, no, I it's, get it. You know and I understand the, Nigga to shiver me timbers. Wait, That's what I you're understand here for. the negativity okay. that surrounds hyper independence. Like I get it. But I'm just saying that hyper independence doesn't always align with happily single, which is what I know. Where your mind was at you said independence but i know you were talking about hyper independence i said super but you are correct right but that's what you meant hyper so okay. you just you said it yes i'm agreeing we're with moving you. on from that we've already established it